Sally, now a tropical depression. The center of the storm is east of Montgomery. It's the D for depression. Maximum steady wind down to 35 miles an hour. Finally, the impact for us is on the way down, but look at Georgia. They're going to get the rain. They'll get the gusty wind. They will get flash flooding just as we had. And you see all of these flash flood warnings along and south of Interstate 65. It's due to the large amount of rain that has fallen and that rain is draining right now and that's why rivers are on the way up about a dozen rivers in our area under flood warning for some it could be major flood stage in just a couple of days on average right along i-65 a half a foot of rain notice back to the mississippi line didn't turn out to be anything compared to Dauphin Island, nearly 10 inches. The Fort Morgan Peninsula, over 20 inches. West of Pensacola, some reports of two feet. So that was tremendous rainfall. And the winds were also way up, gusting to 98 miles an hour at Dauphin Island, 112 at Fort Morgan. NAS Pensacola, over 90 miles an hour. That makes all of this look much better. I've got a good looking forecast, plus a look back at Ivan versus Sally in just a few minutes. C15 weather with Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals, winner of the AMS Broadcast Meteorology Award. Prepare yourself for much better weather. Temperatures in the mid 70s to start tomorrow, mid 80s by the afternoon. A few showers, but most of us will not see anything substantial. But now substantially calmer, a northwest wind at just seven miles an hour in Mobile. It's a quiet night, a peaceful night, after a day of seeing a hurricane move across our area. Hurricane Sally on the 16th anniversary of Hurricane Ivan. I'll show you comparison side by side in just a moment. Do want to let you know that there is a Hurricane Teddy, which is not heading toward us. It might strike Bermuda on Monday. This past Monday, Bermuda had a hurricane. It's that kind of hurricane season. A strong tropical disturbance out in the Atlantic, and there is a strong tropical disturbance in the southwestern Gulf. No signs that it is coming toward us, but in the next five days, it could become the next tropical depression or the next tropical storm. And just think, it was about five days ago we watched a tropical disturbance in the Bahamas move across Florida, become a tropical storm. That was Sally. And then things got really tricky as it got into the northern Gulf. It was repositioned. It's hard to find the center. It slowed, went to a Cat 1, Cat 2, Cat 1, Cat 2. And then we know the rest of the story, making landfall. This was the radar 24 hours ago. The eye wall of a very slow moving storm moved on shore just before midnight. And that's when the winds really picked up across South Baldwin County. That's where the main impact was. The landfall location, very similar to that of Hurricane Ivan. So compare the storm side by side. There are some things that folks are saying, well, this one was stronger or this one was worse. Well, with Ivan, the strongest wind, maximum wind, 130. Now it was a cat five before landfall. Sally's max wind, 105. Ivan was moving 13 miles an hour. Sally was moving three miles per hour. Ivan's radius, hurricane force winds, more than double those of Sally. So Ivan had a wide impact. Even though Sally had 90 mile, 98 mile per hour gusts at Dauphin Island, 112 on the Fort Morgan Peninsula, and then in Gulf Shores, wind gusts from Hurricane Sally about 105 miles an hour. In specific locations, it had a huge impact. Across uh, southern Escambia County, Florida, storm surge was over five feet toward downtown Pensacola. You saw the video earlier of water being pushed into Pensacola. That's what storm surge does. And that wind, it's actually higher at the tops of taller buildings. Doesn't have to be all that high to take a tree down. This is video from Irvington from Debbie Beckin. Beckham. Watch it again in slow motion. That tree didn't just fall quickly. The soil was soaked and it just fell steadily because it had a leaf canopy, just like a sailboat, caught the wind and just leaned over. We're done with those scenes, that's a good thing. Here's your seven day tracker. No more than 30% rain coverage the next couple of days. As we hit the weekend, we'll actually stay in the upper 70s, nights in the 60s, 40% rain coverage, otherwise relatively quiet.